So what I'd like to do now is uh, show you my four chart screen first, because we talked about it. And this kind of answers Ricardo the question on, do I use other types of moving averages? Yes, I do. But it also is going to really show you here how important it is to understand that phases extends to weekly and phases extends to monthly, only it looks a little bit different. We use different moving averages. We also really like to use volume to guess a gauge, and I think the volume is kind of squished here underneath all of here, but I even have volume indicators on my 30-minute chart. And my weekly chart, I don't have any volume on that because I'm really interested in the monthly volume, the daily volume, and the half an hour volume, and it's stuck down here right, you know, a little bit. So let's see if we can get that up. Oh, there it is. So you can see that if you just look at yesterday, with all of this rally that happened yesterday, the volume was okay, but it wasn't as spectacular as like the big down days. So we had a slight accumulation of volume, but not very much. But anyway, let's go more methodical here. So this is a monthly moving average. And what's so interesting right now is that in the monthly moving average, this, this cyan line right here, we have not broken down under what is a five to six or six to seven year business cycle in this spy, including during the pandemic, which is amazing. So that when I say stagflation, I'm not just making this up. I'm not an economist. I never pretend to be an economist. I'm a chartist. And all you have to see is that we tested in the pandemic the lows of that business cycle that go back, back, back to after the financial crash. You know, we had a couple of blips up and down, but then once it took it out in 2011, it has not been below it, even during the pandemic. So what that tells me is we are slowing, slowing, and maybe this will break. And if it does, obviously we're going to get a lot lower, but it's also possible that while other instruments have already tested this and are sitting on it, and if they break, that the S&P at least will go down that far. But more importantly is we're still not anywhere near as horrible as we could be depend based on the fact of what the Fed is doing and inflation, which means the Fed is looking at this too going, you know what, we can raise even more if we have to and drive these prices down lower. And I just want to show you uh, later, after I go through the four screens, a comparison to like IWM, which is the Russell, which really to me measures the economy more than the SPY. This is the 200-week moving average, so right? So we talked about phases. If you had looked at a weekly chart back in March, April, you saw that the SPY broke the 50-week. Immediately, we had that great follow-through. Now, there are other moving averages here. I like to use exponential moving averages on the weekly. We're not going to have time to cover that today, and I don't want to confuse you. But if we go down to the daily, at the same time this was breaking the weekly chart, which was in uh, April, if we go to April here, and I'm gonna make that bigger for you, this was also breaking the 200. We already had a death cross here, but you wouldn't necessarily, you might've gone short here and gotten chopped up a little bit, but then once you got short again under the 200 and under the 50 while it was breaking the weekly, so you see why I like to use multiple time frames. you sort of said, ah, it's not just breaking down on a daily chart. It's breaking down on a weekly chart, and this turned to be, out to be a great short at 440, and you really basically had no pain, especially if you use the 50-day moving average, and if you had taken your profit targets on the way down, you would have made $80 uh, going short on the SPY. Obviously not full position that way. You would have taken your targets along the way, and you could have even bought here on that July breakout that we had, that big short covering rally and it went right to the 200. So here we are in time right now, and we're kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? Uh, I'm not gonna, these are our calendar range lines, so we're not gonna really talk about this. We also do uh, momentum gauge indicators, it's called real motion, and here, of course, is your um, volume. So you can see there are many other aspects that we use, but what I'm really giving you is the simplest form of doing it, and the ability to actually um, just use very, very few indicators to get yourself to the point where you can start making trades or at least day trading in the direction that needs to be. So now I also told you that I look at 30 minute charts. And on my 30 minute charts, these are your floor trader pivots. 
the ones that are high, low, close, divided by three, right? So we have, these have been stacked negative for one, two, three, four, five, six days. It came in positively stacked today because obviously we had that big rally yesterday. So we not only look for the near-term direction on the basis of these floor trader pivots, but on certain days when you're in a downtrend, if the instrument doesn't break out over the floor trader pivot, that tells you that it's still very, very weak. And for a day trading especially, you can actually go short against this floor trader pivot and take your profit and look how S2 comes in in S1. So we love these support areas, broke down, held S1. This day it broke down onto S3. But if we come into today, here we are. We have positive pivots, which is gonna make this floor trader pivot now the near-term resistance. And if we look at this chart right now, it's breaking down under S1. So we're still very, very weak. Now I promised you that I wanted to show you IWM based on that 80 month moving average because it looks very different. This landed right on the 80 month moving average right here. So what that tells me right now is that obviously, if we're gonna be looking at any kind of deeper recession, damaged by the Fed or what have you, this not only broke it during the pandemic where the spiders did not, but we're testing it now, which means two things. If it holds, great. If it doesn't hold and it breaks, we're definitely gonna go lower and the SPY could break down to its 80 month moving average, which considering right now it's trading at around 360, means it can go all the way down to around 310. So when you're hearing people call for 3100 in the SPX, that's what they're looking at. And you can see so far we're a one day wonder, but really now we are gonna be watching this low here at 163.28 to see if that breaks down and if that breaks down, not great. And also it was the first one in November to break the 50 week moving average. So this is my modern family. Okay, so let's go now to um, a one minute chart. And I'm gonna pick on uh, a good trade that we did here. Let's go to, um, let's go to the Rivian chart. Let me find it. I know I have it here somewhere, hold on. Give me a sec. This, by the way, is CF Industries, so it's a commodity-based uh, stock. Here's Rivian on the 30-minute, on the full time frame. So we already showed you the one trade, right? We're flat. We have not gotten back into that position. Reason why is after we took our profit, it didn't clear the 50-day moving average. It started to peek its head through it today, but now you can see it's coming off. So again, if we look, we don't have enough information for a monthly chart because this is a relatively new issue. We have some moving averages in an exponential, but we really can't use the weekly chart for the same reason. We don't have a 50 and a 200 week. So now we really are dependent on the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average, which is all the way up here. So we've been in a bear phase. So this is what makes this so great, is that this 10-day moving average is sloping down. We would have been a buyer today over the 50 if on that 30-minute opening range, which we're four minutes away from completing, and I'm going to blow up this chart, we break out over the 30-minute. We can usually determine our risk, and in this case, we could either risk to the low low or we could risk to yesterday's low. Um, we would have a choice depending on the type of time frame, but right now that's not happening, is it? So this is where that first 30 minutes started out strong, looked like Rivian was going to take off, and boom, with the stress of the market went down. So that's really kind of like how those four term time frames work together. And of course, if we go to a one minute chart, what's so great about the one minute chart? Sorry, we have to go. We have to do that sort of routine every time. But let's turn let's turn this into the Rivian chart, so I don't have to keep digging for it. Sorry, come on. 
no worries, Mish. Uh, I took this opportunity to say I know people are asking questions. Um, obviously, we'll we'll try to do our best to tackle them at the very end. Uh, but yeah, sorry, Mish. Go ahead. Yeah, well, uh, right. At the very end, we will. Um, but essentially, what I want to do now is I just want to show you a, a couple more examples of this so that you people really understand the process. So I've already explained to you, we know the market is in a down market. We know that you know we had a good trade in this going counter to the overall market when the market got a little relief, but because it was a good sort of micro fundamental reason. We got out, we didn't get back in because it didn't clear that phase. You know, everything is consistent. Today would have been the day to get back in, but we have our 30 minute chart. The pivots are positive here, but right now we've broken down. Could we find support at S1? Possibly. Could we find support at previous day low? Possibly. But that's guessing. But what we do know is if for some reason this turns around and takes out not only the pivot, but takes out R1, this blue line is the 10-day moving average, and the 30-minute opening range high, we could risk a couple of dollars to see if, the, if we've got something on this trade. And we can do it maybe not necessarily a long-term swing trade in current market conditions, but it would also probably tell us that the rest of the market has relaxed. And as we just saw with the SPY, actually doesn't break down under this week's low. Otherwise, you have the choice of either going short the market or you at least know that at the very least, this may not be the best day to be a buyer of Rivian. So that's one example. Now let's take a look at something that actually is potentially setting up as a buy. Um, because it's going counter to the market and because it's more commodity based and it's taking me a minute here to find something because you, as we see very often um, the market will drag everything down but we're going to look at KGC and I'm just going to put this chart up here like this. This is a Kinross Gold Corporation, it's a gold miner and we've been very very interested in the overall um, miners as probably the lead indicator of what could happen in the market. We're going to come back to this one minute chart, but let's go to the actual 30, the regular time frame thing. Okay, so KGC is a Canadian miner. It's a cheap stock, you know, clearly. I mean, obviously you could look at GDX, but that's down on the day. This is actually up on the day, which is interesting, which is why if you're looking at ETFs, it's sometimes very helpful to look at what's in the basket of the ETF and find the instrument that might be doing better than the rest of the, of the actual overall ETF. So, you know, G, just to show you the difference, if we look at GDX, which is the ETF for gold miners, you can see that it actually had a nice pop yesterday along with the rest of the market. It's well under the 50-day moving average. It's under the 80-month moving average. It is holding its pivots. And on the weekly chart, it broke everything down, but could possibly be basing out. But we won't know that yet, right? We won't know that until either it clears the 50. Look at the last time this cleared the 50. Well, the last time it was over the 50 was in April when we had that big crash. Since then, this hasn't been over the 50-day moving average. So when I tell you the process is simple, I may get an idea that I want to buy gold miners right? You know, they've, they've been undervalued, they're beaten up. If geopolitics continue to go nuts, or if we lose credibility for the central banks, or we see more social unrest, or whatever it is, we know that the metals, which have been fast asleep, can wake up very easily, silver, gold. And generally, as commodity traders, what we know is often the miners will lead the way. So GDX right now is doing better than the overall market right now in that it's holding inside yesterday's range but on that 30 minute opening range chart it certainly hasn't broken out if it does if you're more of a day trader that might be an interesting opportunity with a very tight risk we talk about an atr this one has a dollar atr if you're day trading you probably don't want to risk more than a half an atr so you maybe would risk 50 cents or give it a little bit more or use the floor trader pivot these are all the techniques that we teach but if you want to be a swing trader Maybe you would still buy it with a stop under here, but really, 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 if you want to be totally pure and take all the guesswork out of it, you wait for this 50-day moving average because April, May, June, July, August, September, we're talking six months of a downtrend that will be reversed 
if it breaks out over the 50 and not like Rivian for one day, but for one or two days, then you can say, wow, I think the gold miners have bought. But with that said, we're looking at KGC because that looks a little bit different, right? First of all, it's had a precipitous drop, but it's actually over the last several weeks been basing out. It's under the 80 monthly moving average, so it's definitely in more of a negative business cycle. But if we come and look right here, we took out the 50 day moving average and we've done that up and down, up and down several times, right? But this would be on my radar right now. And since we have our 30 minute opening range already set, it would either have to take out the 30 minute opening range high and look at the stack of the floor trader pivots, positive coming into yesterday, great day trade yesterday, especially if you got in on a shorter opening range. And now so far today, holding that floor trader pivot, would I continue to be interested in the trade if it breaks the floor trader pivot? Probably not. I'll just put it aside and look at it another day. But will it stay on my radar? Yes, because the fact that it's over the floor trader pivots and it's over the 10 and it's over the 50. However, in this particular instrument, which is now down on the day, of course, like I said, everything is going to have issues on big down days in the market. But you can see that we haven't been over the July highs in quite some time, right, since July. So to me, really, that's where other charting methods come in, like understanding that once it takes out this whole big basing action that it's done since July, that's probably the better time to get in for a swing trade. But that doesn't mean you couldn't take a pro based on everything I just mentioned to you. So let's take a look at another example. But KGC, as it's a commodity, is a really good one. Another one that went into a um, recuperation phase yesterday, or actually a bullish phase, was Vertex. So Vertex is a biotech, and actually, you know, as a biotech company, this is done obviously way better than the overall market. And biotechnology is one of my economic modern family members because it's so interesting how it can be both um, cyclical and non-cyclical, which means it can go up, uh, obviously, when things are good, as everything would. But in, even when things are bad, you can find stocks within that sector that are doing better because as a non-cyclical, it's, it's, it's an essential, you know, and it's being used for all different types of reasons. The big announcement yesterday, for example, in Biogen, that had made huge strides towards Alzheimer's, sent that stock up soaring, also a good opportunity if you happen to have been lucky enough to be in it to take a profit. But let's go to this one. So what's happened? So if you were in here on the 50-day moving average, and we look at the time frame on this, by the way, so this was back in August. So if we look here in August, what was also happening is that this never even got close to the 50-week moving average, but we had that beautiful gap up on the following week right at the same time it corresponded with breaking out under, over the 50. So you had a great opportunity to go long this, maybe you got in around 280, and you could have risked just to this under this low, 271. That sounds like a lot until you look at the average true range, right? This has an average range of over $8. So essentially, you don't even have to risk two times the ATR. You could go with one ATR, which means Basically, you probably would adjust your position sizing, but nonetheless, you went from 280 all the way up to 305. So again, using that, let's round it off to $10. Let's say you risk $10. At 300, you made your two to one. You already locked in your profit. Then if it went up a little further, you probably wouldn't have had a second profit target, but you're certainly using that 10-day moving average could have gotten out of the rest of the trade with a really nice profit. And even if you were still convinced you wanted to hold more, you still had a little profit here when it broke down under that 50-day moving average. So you see how simple that is right now. Now, what's so interesting is if we go to, by the way, look at the uh, monthly chart on this. You've got great resistance here going back from this high in July of 2020 to this high that we just had uh, in August of 2022. So either this is setting up to go much further, if it takes all of that out, this would be the classic monthly cup and handle, or we just reach top resistance, and if the market goes lower, guess what, so will this. However, 
Remember that 50 day moving average. So yesterday, this flashed on my screen and we have indicators that tell us when things are changing phases as going back into a bullish phase. But today, it not only is it inside yesterday's range, but we don't know yet whether it's gonna close above this 50 day moving average. If it does, then that would be the kind of thing that I would put on my radar potentially for tomorrow. I think it's good to be patient. And if we go to the 30 minute chart here, you can see what happened. We have strong positive pivots, but not only did we not get through the first 30 minute opening range here, but we also broke down under the floor trader pivot. And now we've broken down under the 30 minute and we've broken down under S1, which is why I say, if you really take a look at it on all the time frames and the pivots and you put it all together, the dialogue you have with yourself is maybe it'll hold the 50 and maybe it won't. If it doesn't, I'm not interested, especially if the whole market continues to sell off as it's doing right now. If it does hold it in spite of what the market's doing, then everything resets tomorrow and I will continue to look at the pivots. I will continue to look at the 30 minute opening range. And I would continue to look at my risk, which would most likely be very, very tight in current market conditions, or at least maybe around that one ATR that I was telling you before. And if we go into a one minute chart on it, just so you can see what it looks like, that's the KGC, by the way. But if we go to Vertex, I'm sorry, it thinks. There we go. If we look at the one minute chart, what's so nice about our one minute charts is that we have proprietary software that tells us exactly what the 30 minute opening range is. So you can see here, it's telling us exactly where the dotted line is the 30 minute opening range high. This red dotted line is the 30 minute opening range low. So sometimes what we'll do is if it's a good trade because it's holding the 50, the market stabilizes and it goes back breaks down onto that 30 minute opening range, but then comes back through it. We might wait a little bit to make sure it's not a fake out, but we may buy it even cheaper because of the fact that it cleared the 50 day moving average. And then we would have that super tight range, uh, risk mm -hmm. to basically under previous day low with a little bit of fudge, like under 283. So that really is another tactic that we use on a stock that's changing phase. Hopefully that makes sense. Of course, I'm not seeing your questions and I will get to them in a moment, but let's take a look at another example uh, of that uh, type of situation where something changed phases and could be giving us an opportunity or not giving us an opportunity. Interestingly enough, Yelp, the review site, yesterday crossed the 50-day moving average and went into a bullish phase. We'll come back. Let's come back to the one-minute chart and let's take a look at Yelp on a, on a uh, time frame chart. So this is so interesting. You see why Yelp is actually kind of interesting compared to the rest of the market. This is above well, it was above the 50 and the 200 weekly moving average until last week when it broke it, but it held the 200 week. It's underneath the 80 month moving average, but it was back down under the 50 and the 200. It came back up over the 200 a couple of days ago, pierced over the 50 yesterday. And guess what? If you were just a little patient today, which is what we were, now it's showing you that it can't hold that. So this is another one that you can watch and see if it holds the 200 and clears back over the 50. And again, with a $1 ATR, if you risk a couple of dollars under this low or under this low or even under this low, the day it pierced back over the 200 or under last week's low, whatever it is, if you keep it around two ATRs of your risk, it's possible that if this went up and the market stabilized, especially, that you can get a two to one or a three to one. So you can see how consistent it is. And again, if we go to the 30 minute chart, we have our 30 minute opening range, didn't clear that floor trader pivot, which gave us sort of a negative bias for this on today, broke down under that 30 minute opening range low, 
But if we go back to that one minute chart, we have to ask ourselves the question, would this be a candidate if it got back? Well, it actually has gotten, by the way, this doesn't have very big volume, which is why you're seeing so many spaces between the one minute bars. But you could see we broke down under the one uh, opening range low and we're right back above it, but we're not above previous day low by any means. So this would be another interesting one if you're interested in long, and obviously we're covering longs today mainly, to go long if it actually could manage to hold up. I wanna give you one more example, and that is going to be something that came up on our scanner, and it is commodity related, and this is Cameco CCJ. So while that is uh, thinking, there we go. We'll come back to that chart in a moment. Let's go to the four screen chart. So we have a scanner, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, that tells us what stocks are clearing the 50 and the 200 day moving averages and returning to the most positive phase, which is what we know is the bullish phase. So this exactly happened to Cameco. Now again, let's look at the time frames. So on a monthly time frame, this had years underneath the 80 monthly, years and years, and broke out over the 80 monthly in December of 2020 post pandemic. So you can see that just on the longest term time frame, if you're a really long term investor and not a trader, you could have said, gee, I scan for these 80 month moving averages, especially when they've been under or over for years, when they break down or break out. And that's something I'm gonna put in my portfolio with a stop underneath the low of that month and just put it away. And if you did that, you would be uh, actually more than doubled your money at this point because you would have been buying it around 13, 14 and it's trading up at around 30 right now, a little less as we're talking to you, but at its peak. But more importantly, we can see that it could be topping out, but it's still in a very long-term uptrend. On the weekly chart, it's been up and down, up and down around this 50 week moving average, but currently it's above it. And interestingly enough, trading inside last week, I like to use candlesticks, another whole thing that we can't get into today, but you're seeing a lot of candlestick charts. But if we go to yesterday, it broke out over the 50, it came up on our scanner as a bullish trend. From a fundamental standpoint, certainly with lots of countries talking about the potential for using uranium with nuclear, uh, of power for uh, really basically energy, it's possible, it's premature, but it's possible. And you know, sometimes the markets look forward. So it's projecting that it's possible at this point. And so far today, we're holding the 50 day moving average. So it's of interest, but it's down. So, you know, that's why I said this is God gave us a good day today, really, to a God universe, however you want to look at it, to give to for me to demonstrate these things, because not only are there these things that are moving counter the market, but they're also showing you that nothing is impervious to the overall market direction. Positive pivots, 30 minute opening range breaks down under that pivot. Now looks like it's breaking down underneath the opening range low, but it could hold the first support level. It could hold the 50. Do we know this yet? No, we don't. And so that's why these become really good trade setups to look at. Either we walk away from them because they didn't hold their phase change. We buy them because they did. And no matter what the market's doing, we're looking at the 30 minute, the pivots. In this case, I would say if this came back and closed up above the floor trader pivot, then might be worth a shot with a risk to, let's say under 26, because now you have a pretty tight risk. And if the market does not necessarily fully collapse, you have a good chance of this thing going up because it's already in a much stronger phase to the market. So that's really, I think, as much as I can show you uh, in an hour and 20 minutes without getting too bogged down in the details, but giving you those eight steps over and over and over again. What's my macro? What's my sector doing? What's my uh, phases look like? What's the overall market doing? What is the phase change potentially in the actual instrument I'm interested in? Is it going counter? Is it going in the direction of, if I wanna be short? What does the pivots lineup look like for the day? Where did it clear a major moving average? And then on the 30 minute chart, what's it doing on the opening range using a 30 minute? Is it holding the opening range low? Is it gonna clear the pivots? Is it gonna hold that 50 day moving average? 
what's my risk, and do I think I can make double that risk? So I put my stop in underneath that low, and as soon as I get one to one, I may go to a no loss stop in current market, but two to one, I start looking at taking profits. So with that, we're gonna walk away here from the live screens.